All right, so uh, today in this one video, we are going to try to cover um, uh, most of the things that are related to the, uh, to the supply curve uh, of labor. All right, so let's quickly start and let's try to finish this uh, as fast as possible. Uh, the supply curve of labor, as we know, it is an upward sloping curve. Okay, and it is upward sloping. Why? Because as you offer more wages, uh, then the uh, people who are going to work in the industry, uh, they are going to move uh, towards this particular industry and uh, towards this particular market. And uh, if you remember that the individual supply curve always had a backward bend, all right, but that does not happen in the case of the supply curve of the industry. And there are reasons for that, but just, uh, just for a moment, we will recall what we did when we were doing the backward bending uh, individual supply curve. So it looked something like this. And uh, what did we say? We said that there were two effects on this curve. One was the substitution effect and the other was the income effect. So when there was, uh, when the wages went up, the first thing was the substitution effect. Uh, when the substitution effect makes whole more money or more wages means that the possibility of earning more for the worker goes up. So he is going to supply more of, of the work. So the work is the main thing here. He will supply his labor. He will work more and uh, that way work will become more attractive than not working. But in the income effect, which is the second effect, which is acting on the same, uh, as the income goes up, then the possibility of earning high, of earning your desired income, is uh, can be achieved or your target income is achieved when you work less so what happens that uh, at, at very high wages let's call that w2 workers offer less work because they are more interested in leisure why because uh, their target income uh, has been achieved but in the case of the industry supply curve, that does not happen. The industry supply curve does not go backward. It goes upward. Why? Because more and more workers are going to. Some workers will achieve their target and they will uh, experience the a higher. Um, they, they will experience a higher income effect. But that is not going to be the case when a lot of people are moving into the uh, in, into the market. So when a lot of people are moving into the market, even when the wage rate increases. The supply curve keeps increasing. Now we will look at the uh, supply curve of labor for a particular firm, and uh, that was the previous curve. This curve was for the for the industry, for the market, for the general market. Now we are looking at the firm. But when we are talking about the firm, please keep in mind firms can also be in of two types. The structure can be different. One is what if uh, the firm is facing perfectly competitive labor conditions so in that case this particular firm will be a wage taker it will be in no position to make the wage it's, it's a it's a wage taker so the uh, the marginal factor cost which is the which is also the wage that will be uh, fixed for 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 whatever quantity of laborers you want to uh, uh, hire but let's say now you are not in, in you're not facing that condition. This is not a competitive situation and you are in the situation of a monopsony. Now you're the only provider of um, uh, employment to the labor force. So now what's going to happen in that in that case? In that case, uh, you are a wage maker. You are not a wage taker. So you can increase the wage if you want to hire a higher quantity of workers. If you want more workers, you can. So your supply curve or the average factor cost curve is going to slope upward. It's going to slope upward. Whereas uh, if you have a look at this, the MFC, the marginal factor cost curve is also going upward, but it is going upward much more steeply. Now, now why, does, why does that happen? It happens because I will not go uh, into a lot of detail of, of, of this example, but very simply, it is because you need to understand one very important thing that, yes, when you hire uh, more workers, let's say uh, you have hired three workers and now you want to hire a fourth worker. 
So uh, just look at this. Uh, look at this. Um, uh, these figures. Uh, uh, when the quantity of the worker is three, okay. What is the wage? The wage is six, okay. Quantity. But when you hire the the fourth worker, when you hire the fourth worker, what happens is now you need to increase the wage rate. The wage rate goes up. The wage rate goes up from six to eight. All right. But please keep one thing in mind. When wages increase, they do not just increase for the fourth worker. That is a very important thing to keep in mind. They will not increase for the fourth worker only. They will increase for the three workers whom you had hired before. So now what's what's the bottom line? The bottom line is that the, uh, that, that the um, uh, fourth worker, he is going to get a wage of eight but you also have to increase the wage of the previous workers so what do you do you give two dollars uh, extra to the third worker you give two dollars extra to the second worker you give two dollars extra to the first worker two plus two plus two you give two dollars to the first you give two dollars to the second you give two dollars to the third all right so how much have you given more to the previous workers a total of six you add that total of six to eight, which you give to the fourth worker, and you get a total of 14. So here is 14, the marginal uh, factor cost. If you look at the marginal, I don't know where my arrow is. Yeah, so the, to the total cost uh, here goes up from 18 to 32. From six, when you go from the third worker to the fourth worker, your total factor cost goes up from 18 to 32 the difference is 14 so that is how you get 14 you give 8 to the uh, to the worker but the difference is not 8 it is 14 why is it 14 because you have given six extra dollars to all the previous workers so that is the a very important point here that yes when you are hiring extra workers you are not just giving a, a, a wage to the uh, a higher wage to the new worker the wages of all the workers are increasing. That's why the marginal cost rises much more steeply than the other, uh, the, than the average factor cost. I have given uh, an example here on the left. Please go through it. I don't, I do not have the time here to explain this example in detail, but I've already given you the gist of it, so you you understand this. And if you remember, then that on these two curves, then you impose the good old MRP curve, and when you get the good old MRP curve where the MRP curve intersects the average, uh, uh, where it intersects the uh, marginal cost uh, of labor curve, that is where uh, you will, um, this monopsony is going to hire. That's the quantity E2, that's uh, this mon monopsony is going to hire. And uh, where this um, intersects, uh, uh, at the point where the dotted line rising from E2 intersects the average cost curve. Okay, so that's the great thing that the monopsony is doing. That's the great inefficiency that it's creating. It is hiring workers based on marginal cost curve, but it is giving a wage based on its average cost curve. So it hires less workers, pays less wages, and the workers are worse off. Uh, I mean, they are getting the worst of both worlds. Okay, so this is what we did. This was just a revision of what we did uh, previously. I will quickly move now. Uh, the supply curve moves, uh, it, it shifts. Okay, so there are determinants, uh, there are various determinants of uh, this uh, supply curve, uh, the determinants of supply of labor, which I'm going to look into very, very briefly. Okay, uh, the, when there are barriers to entry, let's say um, uh, if the barriers to entry go up, minimum, uh, there are minimum entry requirements. Okay, previously anyone could teach, but now they say no, unless and until you have a degree, we are not going to let you teach. Minimum entry requirements, what happens? The supply is going to go back. The supply is going to, wage hasn't changed. Wages are absolutely at the same position. Uh, just because of these entry, strict entry requirements, the uh, the entry or the supply of workers in the market is reduced. Then there are non-monetary benefits. If there are more uh, benefits in a certain job, like health benefits, uh, pensions, um, good working hours, okay, uh, paid leaves, 
then these non-monetary benefits will attract more workers and the supply curve is going to go outward. What about the income in other professions? If income in other professions go up, then what are you going to do? You're going to leave the, your profession and go into that profession, provided there aren't great barriers to entry in the other profession. Size of the working population. Now, uh, recently, as you know, Brexit has taken place. Previously, what used to happen, anyone in Europe can, could go and they had access to the labor market in Great Britain. But now, after Brexit, no, no, that, that kind of situation has changed. The size of the working population will go down in, in Britain after this, and the supply curve is going to go backward. Also, what about occupational mobility? Is it easy to get degrees? Previously in Pakistan, you could get degrees in two years. Now you, you can't even get degrees in four years. After that, you require a master's and then maybe a professional designation. So keep studying for eight years. Occupational mobility is difficult. You cannot become an auditor unless and until you have a proper uh, charter to, to do the work. Okay, and, and in some professions, you know, it's a really attractive thing that people get overtime payment, you know, for an extra payment, you can go and work for some time. And what if people start valuing leisure? Uh, if, if people start valuing leisure, then the supply, people will want to enjoy life, they want to travel, they want to go outside, they want to go uh, to, on world tours. So, yeah, so the supply of labor is going to go down. Please do keep in mind that the, uh, the that the a supply curve is upward sloping and every time a wage, uh, rate, the wage rate goes up, uh, there will be the, the chances of employment in the industry uh, are going to increase. This is called extension of supply of labor. But please do keep in mind these wage increases will only attract workers if there are, uh, depending upon the elasticity of the supply curve and here are the factors that affect the elasticity of the supply curve so what does elasticity of supply of labor measure it measures responsiveness of labor supply to change in the wage rate so uh, so, so what are the factors broadly speaking there are four factors firstly skills of the work of, of the work uh, or the skill of the worker required in that particular line of work. Uh, recently, I was having a word with someone and they said in, that in PIA, someone is earning a salary of 16 to 17 lakh per month. And it was very enticing. But hey, I cannot join the PIA as a pilot. I, I don't have the skill. So the skill required, if you don't have it, then okay, the, even if the wage rate goes up, then the supply will be relatively inelastic. And secondly, if, if, yeah, you can acquire the skill, anyone can acquire the skill, but if the training period required to do so is very lengthy, then again, uh, the, the supply uh, uh, in the short run at least will be very inelastic. The, the, the time period, again, we come to the time period. In the short term, it's difficult for people to leave jobs and switch jobs. You have notice periods, you have, you are looking at the nature of the change. If the wages have gone down, is it a permanent change or, or a temporary change? Finally, some jobs uh, people do because of commitment and love of the job. Um, someone wants to become a nurse just maybe because she she loves the work, not just because she can do the work, but because she loves the work. Someone wants to become a teacher, not just for the money, not, not just because they know the work, but they love it. So if that commitment level is high, it will be difficult for wage increases to uh, uh, attract workers in other jobs and wage decreases to force people out of the current jobs, okay? So thank you very much. I hope uh, I have made this clear in this very short presentation. Thank you very much.